Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. You're probably a Saints fan, which will explain why you're here. Now, I recently ran a poll on Twitter, Facebook, and our Discord link. And if you haven't joined the Discord, link down in the comment section below. Definitely encourage you to join for some open, fun communication about ball and anything, really. We got channels for everything. But I want to talk about Marcus Davenport. Now, Adebo came in second in this voting, so we'll try to get to Adebo, and then King Crawley was third. But what we want to take a look at is how Marcus Davenport did against the Jacksonville Jaguars, who had a really great game. And, you know, uh, Nick Underhill actually just wrote about him having one of the better performances of camp so far this year. So shout out to him for performing at a pretty high level so far through the preseason camp. And, and obviously the thing for Davenport has always been consistency. But what I want to try to look at this, this video is has looking in his technique, has looking when it comes to the assignment that he's given, because he's not always given the assignment to rush up field. Sometimes he is, you know, Ima, uh, Ima loss or Iman on the line of scrimmage. Sometimes he's got containment. Sometimes he's got upfield penetration. We want to take a look at those different things and how he impacted the game. And then also, I just love this photo. So shout out to the thumbnail being saucy and crispy. So we're going to bust open the All-22 here. Now, we do provide this uh, to some of y'all for film studies and everything. So if you're interested in that, please hit up the uh, Patreon section where we have that listed. But we're going to talk today and start with the very beginning. Now, we'll try to get as many as we can, but Davenport saw a significant number of snaps this game. So we'll try to go through various things, discuss them, and then see how much we can get. I don't want the video to be like 30 minutes, but... We go simple little rotation, but this is just a great job where they're running, which first look there, I think that's a split zone, but we'll see it from the end zone angle right here better. So they're going to cross. Let's see. We're going to split zone. We're just running power and we're pulling. Yeah. So just like we got a power pull, we're going to bring uh, basically a, a tight end to do like a backside crack, this guy against the end. So they're going to let this go free. So the whole goal here is free, double, to next, block, block, leaving this open, hopefully moving to the next level and then running right up the A-gap. Also have this backside option. But then you're going to bring this across here and try to block the end so he can't make an impact on the play. And you can use that double team to move up. So what he ends up doing right here, great job here taking on. Now, look how he took on this incoming block he took an inside leveraging position he did not let them get outside on him or inside on him forcing him upfield in the block and you can actually see it better from this angle so watch how he attacks this incoming blocker from the opposite side the goal is to block him out parallel to the line of scrimmage i'm sorry parallel to the boundary right up there at the top block him out faces back towards his sideline and get him out the way instead davenport does a great job to one take control of the leverage he also is not the end man here so he's got support here on the outside so he can attack inside and that's exactly what he does here he's going to come in nice little separation with a the shoulder there it comes with some power in that jab and then great job by chauncey garner johnson by the way we didn't we didn't mention him who was coming in here coming like a run blitz but good job by chauncey but this is blown up by a couple people dalton or who is uh, sadly not going to be with us this year because he fully tore his tricep this game but then Marcus Davenport with the insane penetration that never allows this play to develop for the Jacksonville Jaguars running back. And we'll watch it full speed here from this angle. So we're going to get some good penetration right there. Great job by him taking on the block. And you see, we did have some Saints in the middle where that run is designed to go get pushed back. Watch this double team. Uh, we, we need a better drop leg technique there from Shy Tuttle. He's had a really up and down, in my opinion, training camp and preseason. But... You see right there, really good pushback. It's a solid closing here. You got a free gap because of the Chauncey just making a great a blitz there. But then you got the the lead blocker. So you've got the numbers there. You, you've got the ability to try to make something happen on this play. Blown up here, blown up there. It's a great job by Davenport. Also, shout out to Chauncey. And that's just really good technique and understanding what you're facing and the role that you're facing. And now, we don't want to spend too much time on random little plays. So let's just keep moving. This time, you're going to see him in a three-point stance. You will see him in primary pass rushing situations. You'll see him up in a two-point stance. But it will vary. They use him in different ways. Now, this time, uh, you get to see some of the explosion because he's got upfield here, and he's okay with it. So they're in the gun. We're going to go upfield, a little outside zone from the shotgun here by Jacksonville. And he's going to blow up his guy, realize 
the the play, then come off of it and be part of the tackle. This play ends up going for a very short game. It's a good job by Demario Davis to roam here. Look at Demario Davis on his alignment. He's coming right behind. He's covered with Shaw Tuttle, who does a better job this time to try to engage. He still gets pushed back, but he helps keep the linebacker clean. And that ends up being a, a you know, not a sack, but a good tackle, even if DeMario does get hit by that offensive lineman. He clogged the gap, and it's a good team effort, team play. And I see Davenport up on in a two-point stance here from a wide nine position. He's going to avoid the chip. Then he's got to deal with the left tackle. Is a decent job here. Not able to get much penetration, but that chip and then essentially getting a double team there. When you're getting chipped and getting that level of respect, it's pretty impressive. And Cameron Jordan on the opposite side had that problem. And like only six snaps, like four of them, this dude was double teamed. But watch this play come through. You've got Jordan on the backside and fighting through. It's a good job to initially separate with power from Davenport, but he's just not able to get close enough. This little quick pass, Trevor Lawrence gets it out. And that actually wraps it up because there's nowhere to go. And uh, we'll, we'll move on to the next one. I forgot. I don't have to skip through the offense. This is just the defense is all 22. So, okay. Next play is a really good one. You're going to see him do another job here as the end man. Now, when he sees that this tight end is going out for the pass, his job now becomes containing the quarterback. And he passes that relationship back to Chauncey, uh, who's got that short zone right behind him. So you see his recognition there was very quick, very quick there. And that's tremendous. You'll see Chauncey recognizing here we've got this. Now you do have a couple of trails that you got to worry about being this next level. But look at the pressure and the ability of Davenport to recognize and then close here. Gets an arm up, try to interrupt this pass. This is a potential safety. And then a good quarterback hit gets Trevor Lawrence on the ground, but it's clean. It's not a late hit. It's a very good job by Davenport. And you can see this reaction time much better from this angle. You see, sees that guy's not even blocking him. And then the boot, recognize it, take off. Trust your guys in the back, gets a good hit. And while this doesn't being completed for a first down, it's not because of Davenport not having good recognition, not having good, uh, you know, good combat ability, essentially. I mean, good hand fighting, the quick off the chip, and then make it happen. Also, sorry if you, you're hearing the clicks of the keyboard. It's just <laughs> part of the job, part of the job. We'll try to move the mic a little bit away and move the keyboard a little bit back. All right, so you got another play here. We're in a um, down stance. Now, they've stacked this left side of the offense. So the strong side's now actually over towards Davenport. You got two in almost a, a tan alignment for the linebacker, which just simply means they're over the tackle. So it'd be called tan. You know, a, a common 4-3 concept would be like tan, zero, tan. So tackle, zero, tackle would be the alignment. But anyway, all that doesn't matter because it's not here. Davenport, I'm going to chip inside because he's not the end man. So now he's using inside leverage. And blocking him with a tight end this year is obviously not going to work. He's reached this level where he's consistently going to beat whoever you've gotten. And once again, he's not trying to make a flash play. Notice how he stops his upfield penetration to fill the gap. So instead of him just trying to make the play by himself and trying to out-athlete it, look at him just like, look, I'm going to clog it and trust that guys like Zach Bond, uh, Davis, Shy Tuttle, you know, anybody else that we have on this play is going to come up here. Look, he's just getting in the way. He's basically using the tight end to tackle the running back. You know how disrespectful that is? Come on, man. Tight end room watching this in Jacksonville right now is not happy. But what are you going to do? Davenport is a physical freak with good technique. There ends up being a tackle for loss. And that's just great technique. And it's unselfish play because he could just try to penetrate upfield and make a tackle. But instead, he fills the gap, understands his role and assignment, and then makes the play. Next up, the only thing I don't like about this one, he is a little bit back here. He's about almost a yard, half yard back. And with him at times having trouble being explosive off the line, you like to be a little bit closer to his contact point here, unless they're you know purposely trying to line him up back for momentum maybe, try to get him a little bit extra momentum. But a release, good job here. So he's using the one-arm stab. He's creating separation because his job is containment. He's looking around. And then breakthrough once you see that the play is not – um, a uh, run. You're watching for that, especially with these young quarterbacks, Trevor Lawrence. You got to worry about play action, RPOs. So, does a good job with his contain there. He's not trying to upfield. Then, when he recognizes it, break away and then go try to get a hand up. Good job on the pass rush by the linebackers because the Saints are running a backside blitz here for a backside compared to Davenport. So, watch where you've got Bond, who are both going to basically be uh, coming through the back right here. 
and ends up being a incompletion and good coverage by Malcolm Jenkins, by the way. Good coverage. We need more of that as the season goes along. Now we have Davenport once again in this like really backed up state there uh, on the top of your screen. Kind of run the arc here. Doesn't get a great pass rush, but at the same time, um, well, it's an incomplete pass. So Saints are going to have Zach Vaughn here on the backside. See, covering up that nickel spot. I think if we're looking for something, look at Vaughn get hands on and then jam. Completely disrupts that route. The only negative there is Chauncey having to get over the top. That underneath route is fine, but there's good pressure in the middle, which I know is something that Saints fans are worried about. And now Davenport doesn't have much in this play itself is good team defense. And I think that's the good thing about having a, a nice player like Davenport is when he isn't the best player in the play, the rest of his defense is still solid. And it's one of the reasons I've struggled to see a lot of these people's arguments saying, well, the Saints are a five-win team. But how? I mean, they got so much going for him. Ken Crawley, fantastic game here. I, I really want to show Ken Crawley. Y'all have to randomly look at him in these all 22s that you'll see. But number 25 had a very, very good game today. All right. Now you're going to see a little bit of that upfield run because they were doing a pass rush situation for Davenport. Does it end up being anything? It is a good job to uh, spin through. And I remember talking to Underhill, it was like, uh, you notice Davenport ever using spin moves before? And I think you'll see that he's trying to add things to his repertoire. I think his hand fighting is a little bit better than we've seen in camp. I think in terms of his pass rush, you've seen some improvement there. So it's really nice to see continued development from him. As always, it comes down to consistency, health. What's that looking like for Davenport? So we'll get another one. Two-point stance here. Inside rush to outside. Once again, we got a, a very short pass, very quick. Trevor Lawrence getting the ball out. So it's tough to get sacks in those situations. And I know a lot of people are like, well, how come the Saints were getting sacks? I mean, pressures aren't sacks. Sometimes they are when you're talking about a young quarterback or any quarterback that's hitting a throw from their drop. So you saw we have a three-step drop here, which is essentially a five-step drop in shotgun. And then we're hitting our point and releasing. That's two seconds or less. Most people are going to really struggle to get there. Also, once again, shout out to my man uh, Cam Jordan for some reason being double teamed at all times. I don't know at this point in his career if he's worth a double team, to be honest with you, but if they're going to do it, go for it. Yeah, let him let him be that guy. And maybe he still deserves it. I don't know. I can't tell. He's double teamed. But whatever. <laughs> whatever. And then we're going to wrap that one up. Let's move on to the next one. Now we've got him almost giving like he's dropping back in a coverage look here, but he's going to rush up field. Another really good bull rush, and he's an almost sack right there. An almost sack. And I know a lot of people hate the almost sack there, but that pressure results in this type of throw. Now let's look at the technique. He's once again from that wide nine setting, and you notice Cameron Jordan is doing the exact same thing. He's going to come through, run. The, he's going to rush the arc, and then he's going to attack half man. So watch him. Go full, but if you notice where his arms and positioning is, oh, he actually doesn't go. He actually just full bull rush. No half man there. He just completely overpowers and outplays his uh, the left tackle. Uh, he just bullies him. He doesn't try to go half man and do leverage. He just goes, look, I'm better than you. I'm stronger than you. Get out the way. Pressure. Wish the sack would have happened. He's right there, but it does lead to an inaccurate pass and an incompletion. And you know what? While it's not a sack, that's literally the next best thing. And you've got to be happy to see this. And it was happy consistently. Now, we need to skip a couple of these because we start seeing Carl Granderson get some snaps. And then they come back to Davenport. So, if we see uh, right here, we got Tano Passignon on the right side. And we've got Carl Granderson on the left. But they do go back to having Davenport out on the field. That's another Granderson and Passignon play here. Sorry if I'm just skipping through randomly. Another Granderson and Passignon. All right, now we're back to Davenport. I think it was drive four they put him back in. Drive four or five. So, once again, another upfield rush. Now, this is a short little release play, and once again, he makes it happen because this is not a, a clean release block here by the offensive lineman. He's trying to get hands on. Davenport does a good job. Sloops underneath, and him and the blitzer and Zach Vaughn get there about the same time, and it's a short game. They want this play to develop more. They want to be able to get their running back, who sadly uh, gets injured in this game as well. So I hate to see injuries in the preseason. But you got a free blitzer and then a block guy getting to the quarterback at the same time. That tells you how good the pass rush was from Marcus Davenport. Now look at it again from this other angle. This is why we say, look, sacks are great. This is really good to see, too. We just need it consistently. Now he's coming from a down position, inside hand placement. Look at the jab to create separation there. And then look at the left arm placement. I know I'm kind of in the way. 
Look at him hooking inside and sweeping away this arm and then using that explosion to just go right past. Left tackle has no chance. Forced to get that pass out before, you know, the, the running back's got a chance to really create enough separation. Marcus um, Williams does a great job of closing in on the tackle. Great play by everybody. Here's you another one. Like, sure, this pass is still completed, but man, <laughs> if this play had gone to the running back, look at him split this double team. Well, this is just Davenport coming with power and purpose. Look at him. Bam. That's two offensive linemen. That's not a tight end and a left tackle. That's two offensive linemen. That's like the old Zach Streep 64 is reporting eligible package. And he's breaking through both of them. And if that had been the, the case, that route has now been disrupted. It's been thrown off just a little bit. Enough to help your linebacker get into the flat to make sure that coverage is solid. And even though it's not a sack yet, it does affect the play. It affects routes. It affects coverage. It's good. We like to see it. And they ran this play to try to give him extra time. A little bit of pass rush there from, uh, what was that, Chase Hansen or Caden Ellis? I didn't catch the number. But good job. Pass is completed, but he did his job well. Let's move on to another one. Let's move on to another one. We're stacking this offensive line. We're having too much pressure. Inside this time, didn't get the initial win but does collapse down the line. The mental processing, his ability to recognize the play, I think is quickened in his now coming into his fourth year. Coming through, you see he's trying to do the double swipe and come inside. Doesn't get an initial win. Shot to the left tackle for winning this rep. However, sees it, still releases, attacks down, and gets the tackle like a two-yard game. That's a win. You'll take that as a defensive line coach. You'll take that. You want him to win both times, but he makes the play. All right, I think we've gone back to Granderson. Yeah, we have. So let's go ahead and forward back a little bit. We need to find our guy that we're focusing on for a couple more plays. Uh, we're not going to go too much longer just because we, we're not even a, a third through this film. Not that he plays the entire game, but I want to make sure you get as many good looks at Davenport as you can, who has just had a phenomenal camp and a phenomenal preseason. I think it's the next drive. Yeah, all right. So we did another drive where we alternated the rotation, and now we got to Davenport back in. Playing from his traditional spot, Ken Crawley right behind me. Man, I wish we were watching him. Another thing that I've liked that he's done this year, and you'll see it when we get from the end zone angle, is this is another recognizing, processing type thing, but watch. Right, come on. Hike it up, Lawrence. Thank you. See him recognize the cuts coming and see how it gets the man next to him but doesn't get him. The only thing he didn't do right there, recognition was good, saw what was happening, Focusing on the quarterback, get your get your arms up in a passing lane. That's the literally only critique I have here. But he sees the lineman going down. Eyes still on the quarterback. Eyes on the quarterback, but still feeling that situational awareness. Avoids it. Doesn't get taken down. We're trying to get out for a screen pass. And then look at him. He's out there making a play because he doesn't get taken down by the cut block. Now, the Saints defense is good. Look at him. You, you got Chauncey there. You got Zach Bond there. Defense as a whole, good, in place. But you're seeing a really good job by Davenport for recognition. You're seeing it in pass rush. You're seeing it in multiple techniques. Davenport having a solid game, whether it's the run, the pass, you know, avoiding or recognizing play action. thought he had a really strong game against Jacksonville. And if your argument is that Jacksonville is bad, well, you know what? There's, not, there's only so many David Bakhtiaris in the game. Now, this one does kind of get away from the Saints defense a little bit on third down. They try to run a stump play. And this is something you see the Saints do a lot of. Once again, there's a, there's Dalton who we're going to miss because, man, he was getting some significant playing time. So they try to stun inside. Not the best upfield penetration here because generally, if you're doing a stunt, you actually want to attack the tackle shoulder right here so it makes the loop easier. But Davenport has been doing this really well for a while. Busts inside and doesn't get much penetration, mainly because the, the point man on that stunt did not do a great job to clear out for him. But... That is uh, something you will see them Saints do a lot of this upcoming year is running those stunts with Davenport to get him inside and use that momentum and power to his advantage. Ooh, sorry about that. Ugh. All right, a little upfield rush. There's that spin move, forces the rollout, doesn't get the sack, still forces the pressure, and then forces an almost interception. Let's look at it from this other angle. And this is something we've not seen Davenport do, a very quick, efficient spin move to add to his pass rush. So we're trying to do an upfield rip right here. Release, see the double swipe. That's the second thing. So we tried rip, didn't work. Now we double swipe the, the hands away. Now we see them attacking our outside shoulder. Cool. Boom. Spin. That forces the, the quarterback to be out. Most quarterbacks are probably getting sacked right there. Trevor Lawrence is a, is a very good young athlete. Forces him out the pocket. He has to reset, find a clean one. 
More pressure coming. Almost an interception. This is exactly what you're hoping to see from a Marcus Davenport. And I didn't even show you the best play from Davenport in this game where he absolutely just obliterates and puts on his butt the left tackle. This was a good game. Hopefully you see more of this. You have to see consistency of this to truly have that Davenport was worth the two first, which is what he's gotten that nickname for, even though it's not his fault. But had a really good game today. And you see the technique there. You see the consistency there. He's just got to have it in the season and stay healthy. And hopefully he does. If you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button. Subscribe if you have not already. And share this out with any other hootouts who want to see some of the tape of how Marcus Davenport has been. Y'all are amazing. As always, hootout. God bless. We'll catch the next one. Deuces. That's me, Audi.